welcome to Portugal. I am so excited to be here with you guys. I hope you're having an inspiring day. We just got here, we just landed and checked into our Airbnb. It is about two o'clock in the afternoon, so we're just gonna spend the rest of the day wandering around, checking out what's in the area. We're staying in Alfama, but just for the night, we are gonna be headed to Lagos and the Algarves tomorrow. But I am so excited to be here with you guys. I'm so excited to take you guys on another trip with me. A quick reminder that if you like this video and travel videos like this, make sure to give it a big inspired thumbs up. Comment below, let me know if you've ever been to Portugal. Dave's actually Portuguese, so there's a lot of meaning here for us. And if you're new to the Inspired Family, thank you for coming all the way to Portugal with us. We hope you all join us for a little bit longer and subscribe. But with that, day one, Portugal, let's go. So it is a beautiful a sunny day in Lisbon today, so this is my get summer ready outfit. Just a really cute summer dress to get the trip started. It's this orange gingham dress that I got from Zapel with this little tie up detail in the back, but it's just such a comfy throw on and go sort of dress. And it is so warm outside. I stripped out of all my Canadian clothing. I was like just so ready to get into a summer outfit. And for accessories, keeping it really simple, just with this little hat thing that you've seen in basically every single travel video. Also using this little wicker bag that I got from Le Chateau and I absolutely adore, so cute, and I feel like it goes with everything. I may have brought a few too many wicker bags with me, but that'll be our little secret. Vamos. So the first thing we do when we get to a destination is walk around and get our bearings, which is what we did. We ended up heading to a restaurant to get some classic Portuguese spirit that was actually built in 1890, which was super cool, and I found my research to come out. I also tried Arroz de Polvo, and then we continued just to walk around and explore, and found ourselves in the Alfama district, which is where we were staying during their June festival. So we happen to be here in Lisbon while they're doing this thing called the Saints Festival and this area in Alfama essentially closes down and they have all these street vendors selling things and fado music. There is truly nothing like street festivals in Portugal. People are just on the street having fun, everybody's together and there's just such an energy at all hours of the day and night and it is honestly just so, so infectious. So it's really cool because they have speakers all around the Alfama district playing the same fado music, which is traditionally Portuguese, and it just like makes you want to dance and have fun. Uh, so we are in a place in Alfama now having some classic Portuguese fare as we had for lunch today. And we're doing like a set menu. It's pretty good. It's like 13 euros. We all ordered called Verde, which is this green soup that all four of us love. We also tried snails and that was pretty interesting, but it was the best end to our first night in Portugal. Happy Tuesday. We are just checking out of our Airbnb, or at least this Airbnb. We're gonna be renting a car and heading over to the Algarves today. I'm so excited. I've never been to the Algarves, but I've seen it everywhere and it looks so beautiful. Dave and I are actually gonna be taking the car and then Vic and Peter are gonna be taking the train. This is what I'm wearing for our little road trip. It's about three and a half hours from Lisbon. The same hat you guys are gonna see me wear basically every day. And this little Zayful set that I got recently. I love this gingham pattern, as you guys no, I just like to look like a giant picnic blanket and Stan Smith because I'm trying to go comfortable. Let's go to the Algarve. You can do it. Hello. In our rental car on the way to the Algarve and we are currently driving on top of the ocean. Yeah. Google Maps says we're driving over water. So if you are planning to head to the Algarves and you're flying in to Lisbon, I would highly recommend driving. It's actually really easy to drive and the views that you get to see are incredible. We finally made it to Lagos, which is where we are staying in the Algarves, and it was so beautiful. These streets are so quaint, and you just want to stroll around in them. There's nothing exciting in particular to look at, but it just got such character to it. The colors of the buildings are so beautiful, and you just are in a great mood when you're in small beach towns on the coastline of Portugal. 
maybe it's something about the ocean air but we were on definitely a happy high as was this little kitty at our airbnb who is obviously living her best beach life so we spent the day kind of wandering around and now we are on our way to catch sunset along the beach here in Lagos. The seagulls here are very intense, which is what you're hearing. And it did a little bit of an outfit change. There is not a floor length mirror here again, so I'm gonna have to show you my outfit piecemeal. Wearing this top, which is actually a bathing suit that I got from Topshop recently. You probably saw it in a recent haul, but I just love the buckle detailing here. And then I've got this really beautiful long yellow skirt. This jacket here just to keep me warm just because it's getting a little bit chilly here at nighttime and this jacket here is also from Topshop and for shoes just wearing these sandals that I got from Gap recently I just love the way that they're made kind of looks European and that is my outfit for a little bit of a sunset walk let's go it is so windy so our Airbnb host actually told us about this little spot on the coastline here in Lagos that apparently during the low tide and at sunset ends up exposing this bridge that is typically underwater. You get there by going down to the beach and then climbing through and under the little rocks that you see here. Well, not little rocks, they're quite large actually, but it is absolutely beautiful, it's so quiet. Not a lot of people, I guess, know about this spot because we didn't really see anybody else there. But when we got through and climbed underneath these rocks and got to the spot she was talking about, it was absolutely magical and you really felt like you were at the end of the world. Good morning, happy Wednesday. We are here in the Algarves now. Yesterday arrived, got some time to explore, saw sunset, it was so beautiful. And today we are gonna be headed to a couple different places along the coast. We're gonna be going to Doge Hermão Beach and just explore the beautiful beaches that the Algarves is renowned for. This is not a full length mirror, but I'm hoping I can kind of, you know, point down for you guys to show you my outfits. I'm wearing the same hat, <laughs> surprise, surprise. I'm wearing these really cute uh, fluffy tassel earrings that I got from Le Chateau. This Gap bathing suit that I'm obsessed with. The red stripes just look so cute and nautical. And these shorts that are also from Gap. And we are ready for our first full day in the Algarves. You hold on so tight. So our first stop was this place called Ponte de Piedad, and it is one of the more famous lookout points in Lagos. And for really good reason, the rock formations and the lookouts from the cliffs is just beautiful. Something to keep in mind is that you do have to walk down a very, very large flight of stairs to get here and it does get quite busy, so you do want to come as early as you possibly can. So we just left Ponte de Piedad and we are headed off to our next destination, which is Praia dos Hermanos. So our next spot, Praia Tres and Mao, is very similar in that the coastline has these incredible rock formations and you have to kind of climb through and around them. Kind of reminded me of Arizona, but you really do feel uber small amongst these gigantic rock formations. And to get to where the Tres Hermanos, which is translation in Portuguese for three brothers, you have to climb through a little bit of a narrow walkway and then you get to these incredible three large rock formations that are the three brothers that the beach is named after. And when I mean three brothers, I mean three gigantic rock formations in the water. <laughs> And then we ended our day in Carvoeiro, which really reminds me of Positano in the way that the beach is structured around the city, but is obviously beautiful just as every single beach town is in Portugal. So we just finished a very long but great day along the Algarve coastline, checking out some new beach towns. And we are here now back in La Luz, and we're having dinner at this place called Fools and Horses. Fools and Horses? 
Good morning. Happy Thursday. We are up bright and early because we actually didn't get to go to the Ben Gill Caves yesterday. They were all booked up. So at least the kayaks were fully booked up. So we are actually headed there. We were able to book an appointment yesterday for this morning. So we're up bright and early and are going to road trip over to the Ben Gill area, which is about an hour from Lagos, and head over to see this epic cave and a very exciting another beach outfit that basically looks the same as every other beach outfit but i also had to pack for three and a half weeks so you're gonna see a lot of different variations of similar outfits or similar outfit components hopefully it gives you guys an idea of how to use your pieces in multiple different outfits as well for the summertime wearing the same hat that you guys know i love and adore wear every single day wearing this bikini from Cupshi that you guys have probably seen um, from mexico i've worn it in the past the same I gap shorts that I was wearing yesterday just because again we're gonna be kayaking to the Bengal caves so I'm just gonna wear something comfortable and obviously swimmer related and this is a little gap purse that I got recently and think is so so cute I think the size is so perfect this would be outfit one for day number four three I don't know four <laughs> arrived here at the Bengal cave and we are off to head to the cave <laughs> we kayaked in, and now we've made it. called Al Bufera now and we spent the day at the beach just like laid around and lazed out and now we're at this tapas place having a little pre-dinner meal. I also changed my outfit because it is a little bit windy and this is a long sleeve dress so I'm singing Celine Dion. Happy Friday. So yesterday was kind of a super chill day. We didn't really do that much. We kind of just hung out on the beach a lot and kind of just wandered around. So I didn't vlog too, too much, but today we are going to be going to a couple new places here in the Algarves. We're going to be going to Estoy, which I think has this like really cute palace. And then we're going to be going to Faro, which is like the furthest, uh, beachside town of the Algarve. So we're gonna do some exploring around there. I think today is the only day that we're not doing a sort of like beach water activity. We're going to kind of stay around town and explore what the Algarve towns have to offer. And this is my first outfit of the day today. Just wearing this really nice long, I wish I could show you how long it is. Um, but it is this beautiful long floral dress that I feel like it's just comfortable and it's so great for just walking around. It's like the perfect summer dress. I got this one from Zayful pretty recently. And for accessories, wearing these Anna Luisa earrings you guys have seen me wear on heavy repeat. And some hair clips because, you know, millennial trends and all. Oh, also I got the most horrible sunburn yesterday. I put sunscreen on but was laying really weird against the sun and I got just one strip of sunburn. I obviously did not reapply very well. I fell asleep, took a little nap, and uh, lesson learned. Put sunscreen on repeatedly. And also don't lie in the sun where like there's like a strip of light. Classic Mel. Let's go exploring. So about an hour and a half later and we are now in the little town of Estoy in Faro. And there is a like palace here that kind of looks like Versailles. So we're gonna go visit it. This is where they used to wash clothes. So you take the clothes from in there, wet it, that would be full of water, and rub it against the rocks, rocks, slap it on the rocks a bit, and wash it over here. And that's how they do laundry back in the day. 
Palacio de Estoy is one of those places we had no idea was going to be so beautiful. It honestly felt like you were transported back in time to Portuguese royalty. And surprisingly for how big and beautiful this place is, it was not teeming with tourists. Basically, we were the only ones there. And it truly felt like I was a Portuguese princess in the south of Portugal enjoying her summer vacation. Um, but this was honestly one of the biggest surprises uh, that we got to see in Portugal that we didn't expect to and it was honestly so magical I would have stayed there forever and there was also a wedding happening there which was basically my dream come true was definitely living vicariously through their rehearsals so we have now made it over to Faro, which is one of their biggest cities here in the Algars. And we're going to do some exploring. I think we're going to go see a temple church full of dead bones people and explore around the city. Let's go. Faro is definitely one of the more bustling beach towns that you'll see in the Algarves with more people and more things going on. We ended up visiting this church that was known for their Chapel of Bones, which honestly, I am not a huge fan of seeing. I admire the historical relevance of it, but it's just not my vibe. We also ended up wandering the streets and honestly, I felt like Beauty and the Beast, I don't know, like this old provincial town sort of vibe just wandering the cobblestone streets which by the way are slippery so make sure to watch out for that when you're walking around but Faro is definitely a walkable town still so if you can spend a day here I definitely would we ended up also seeing another wedding this day at one of their other churches and apparently it was like famous people because people were taking pictures of them finished off with some churros naturally so stopped for dinner and we are here at Kashkina Cruzeiro, which is just like a little Portuguese joint here in Faro and what am I having? I'm having mussels and some chorizo, so Portuguese sausage. <laughs> no Portuguese. <laughs> And with that last day in Faro ended our trip to the Algarves, which was so incredible. I need to go back. Happy Sunday. So yesterday we traveled back from the Algarves and from La Grouge back here to Lisbon. The drive was four and a half hours long and we ended up getting here around evening time. We checked into our new Airbnb, which you see me in right now, and just really took the night easy and also slept really early. And today we are exploring Lisbon. We woke up really early, got some sunrise shots in, and now we're gonna explore a couple areas like Barro Alto, Pink Street, a couple things like that. So hopefully some cool things to show we get. And I obviously didn't do a very good job at scouting the mirror situations at these Airbnbs because there has not been a full-length mirror in any one of these Airbnbs. So we're gonna have to try to improvise again. So this is outfit number one for some exploring. I'm just wearing this cute little silk headband, which is actually for washing your face, but I thought it was so cute. Wearing this tie up knot crochet top that I got from Topshop a while ago. And also wearing this beautiful peachy colored floral skirt has so much beautiful movement to it. And this is actually from a brand called Mary Zelly. This is the first time I'm actually um, trying any of their pieces, but I'm so happy with it. So, so pretty. I believe the brand is from Poland. And this is my outfit for day one, I guess, of Lisbon Lisboa exploring. Let's go. So woke up bright and early to go and visit some Miradurus, which are basically lookout points in Lisbon. And normally these spots are filled with tourists taking photos. You can't really explore it and see it in a calm nature. So we woke up early just to do that. And we were really lucky. It was so quiet. The flowers of the trees were in full bloom by the Miradurus. So it was just such a magical start to our day. And of course the views from these lookout points are incredible and definitely photo worthy. We stopped by the famous comic book history wall and then ended our afternoon in Biro Alto. So we are here now in an area in Lisboa called Biro Alto and they have a lot of azulejos here which is that blue Portugal Portuguese tile they're really well known for and we're kind of just exploring. The guys are having some food. 
Spyro Altu is actually really cool and unique because of the amount of graffiti that they have around and the street art that they have. And after Spyro Altu, we actually ended up heading to Pink Street, which is this famous, you guessed it, Pink Street in the middle of Lisbon that they actually clean and are surrounded by bars. And obviously it is a big tourist attraction because it is a pink street in the middle of a bustling European city. Naturally, you know that I had to snap a few pictures because when else will I see a beautiful pink street? <laughs> it's not, it would never be the same if we did. How did you guys do this exact same time? What the fuck? So we are back in Alfaba tonight and we're having dinner basically in the middle of a street. And Portugal also just won some sort of European soccer league. So it's a little crazy in here. Happy Monday, we are up bright and early again. We are spending the day today in Sintra. We're first gonna go to this kind of Comercio Plaza where it's such a beautiful archway. It's kind of the centerpiece of Lisbon. We're gonna go check that out first. I'm gonna head on the train, head to Sintra, which is about, I believe, an hour outside of Portugal, but they've got all these historic and beautifully ornate palaces and, and hills and things like that. So we're gonna take a day trip there. Here is my outfit for part one of today. I'm just wearing the suit just because it's a little chilly in the morning time, and you guys know I love myself a good suit. I got this one recently from Zara. You guys probably will have or have seen it already in a Zara haul. For accessories, wearing these really cute earrings that I got from Le Chateau recently. Dave also picked up some rings for me at the market here in Lisbon and I'm obsessed with how cute they stack. Also wearing this purse that I got from Gap and I also have a couple sundresses that I'm probably going to change into when I get to Sintra just because it gets really hot in the afternoon but then again really cold in the mornings and evenings but this is my outfit for a little trip out to Sintra today. Let's go get our palacio on. So I actually got asked quite a bit on Instagram how we got shots with nobody in it here in Comercio Plaza and the trick to it really just is waking up early before everybody else is out and about so you get the place all to yourself and it was so magical, so quiet. This incredible arch is so magnificent. And then we headed on a train over to Sintra. So we are now in Sintra. We trained here, got here, and we are now walking to the first palace. So a lot of the palaces are kind of spread really far apart. Right now we're going to Quinta de Galera, and then we're gonna move from there to Peña and maybe a couple others. But you do have to get from one to another, and they are quite far, so. Andiamo, or vamos. <laughs> So there are a couple of ways to get around to the different castles here in Sintra, but I would definitely recommend either getting a tuk-tuk. Ubers work as well, but if you're hiking, you definitely won't be able to do more than maybe two castles properly throughout the day. There's just so much to see. And Quinta de la Galera was so incredible. Definitely a more gothic looking castle, but it is incredible to think that somebody used to live here and that somebody built this back in the day. My mind was literally just blown. So after a horrible Uber ride, we are finally here at Peña Palace. We hiked all the way up the mountain and there it is. I'm very excited to go take a look. So Peña Palace is so busy. We got there in the afternoon and it was so windy and just full of tourists, but I definitely want to come back here and check it out. So we are back from Sintra now. It was a long day, but we are back here in Lisboa and we stopped by a pasteleria, which is basically like a little pastry shop and they sell these pastéis nata, which I love. And we also got something really special. So these are all these moles. Are, these typically they like only sell these in a veru, these but I'm very excited to give this a try. I love pastéis nata, so we'll see if I like this. These are different than pastéis. Mmm. <laughs> they are like sweet eggs. Not my favorite. They also got a good but they're interesting. You know, fresh better. 
morning. So we are up bright and early yet again. Surprise, surprise. We got back from Sintra yesterday. It was so beautiful, but honestly, Sintra is so tiring. I think to enjoy it properly, I would like commit a couple days to it to, to really explore and absorb all the palaces and the castles. Anyhow, today is Vic and Peter's last day here in Portugal. Dave and I are gonna be extending into Porto afterwards, and then from there, I'm actually going to Italy, but Nevertheless, it is technically our last day together, all four of us as a group. And this morning we're headed to Belang, which is famous for their pastiche de nata, which is the Portuguese egg tarts and a really beautiful Belang tower and a couple things like that. So that's what we're doing this morning. And this is my outfit for this morning, just this beautiful white dress that I got from Hudson's Bay. I believe the brand is called Misguided. I just love these poofy, translucent peasant sleeves. And we're off for our last day exploring as a group. Pasta Janata, I'm coming for all of you. I just left your place, I gotta say I miss your face. The Tower of Belang is another one that you want to wake up early to see if you want to get it empty. The place is pretty busy during the day just because they actually do tours inside of the tower we ended up not doing that and kind of just wanted to see it on its own sitting in its majestic glory on the water but it is honestly so magical to think that there were people hundreds of years ago who walked these very same steps on this very same beach looking at the very same tower and we also visited another monument right beside it which was really cool from there, we went to the famous Pastage de Belang, where the Pastage de Nata is arguably created from and or was founded from. And let me just say, these Pastage de Nata are the best thing that I have ever eaten in my entire life. This is my favorite Portuguese treat, and the custard just melts in your mouth. We got up bright and early, checked out of our Airbnb in Lisbon, in Lisboa, and Dave and I are on our way now to Porto. Vic and Peter actually caught their flight out this morning to Toronto. They're not kind of extending their trip to Porto because they've been there before, but Dave and I are very excited. We're gonna stop by a couple places kind of on the way between Lisboa and Porto. So I think we're gonna go to Nazaré. We're gonna be going to Aveiro where Dave's family is from. And we are excited to show you more of Portugal. For now, the road trip continues. So we've made it here to Nazare and this place is known for the best waves in the world. They biggest, host this biggest. and the biggest waves in the world. They host these like tournaments every year where the surfers come and like surf two story high waves and it's insane. So we're gonna go check it out. It is truly incredible to believe that there are surfers who surf these incredible waves that reach two stories high. There is a feed to enter into this lookout point to check out the waves and the waves obviously aren't as large as they are at their peak, which is normally around October, but it was definitely so cool to see and just to think of the surfers who would come and surf these incredibly large waves. Just looking over the lookout point, I blew over and was a little scared. From Nazare, we ended up going to Aveiro, which is actually where Dave's mom is from in Portugal and where Alves Monge is from. So naturally had to try it there and they were so delicious there, much better than in Lisbon. But Aveiro is also such a beautiful little town and actually has these little boats that remind me of Venice and take you through their canals. And from there, we continued our way on to Porto just in time to watch sunset as we drove into the beautiful city of Porto. So we have finally made it here to Porto. Yesterday, we obviously did the road trip, stopped by a couple cool places like Nazare and Aveiro, and now we're here at our Airbnb in Porto. We spent the night kind of just winding down. We went and got groceries and ate that for dinner. And today, we're gonna be exploring Porto for our first full day. We're only here for two days, so gonna try to get the most out of it. And it also has kind of a floor-like mirror, not really. Um, but I can show you guys a bit more of my outfit here. 
year. So I am wearing just this polka dot dress that um, I wore for a bit in the Algarves, but I'm actually wearing it as a skirt today. Uh, this is like a great little hack if you're packing like me for three and a half weeks and need to create outfits to kind of extend and make your pieces extend into different outfits. So this is a dress, but again, wearing it as like a flowy pleated skirt. I got this dress um, from Hudson's Bay. I actually used Ebates as well, uh, which gives you cash back on your items. So this dress was a great deal. And wearing this crochet Oxford tie-up shirt that you guys have seen before. I got this years ago from Topshop, but I just think it's so cute and it's a perfect layering piece, especially if you want to kind of transition dresses into skirts. And for accessories, wearing these earrings that I've been obsessed with recently. These are from Le Chateau, but I just love the tassel look of it. It's a really nice, subtle little tassel as well. And this is my outfit for day one of Porto. Let's go! So we are now here somewhere called Vogue Cafe and it is so pretty. The entire cafe is based off of Vogue, it has Vogue prints and Vogue magazines everywhere and it is so, so pretty. Oh, that's me. For somewhere as cute as Vogue Cafe, I was so surprised that it wasn't busier, but I just have this fascination with Vogue, so I had to come here and check it out. The space and interior is honestly so beautiful, and the prices of the food is actually really reasonable considering it feels a little swankier. From there, we headed to the coastline in the Douro Valley and checked out the street market, which was teeming with buskers and obviously merchants selling little trinkets that you can buy as souvenirs. So we woke up from a quick little nap and we're on our way now to this lookout point that's on the other side of the river here called the Douro River uh, that looks on to Porto. So I'm really excited to see what sunset looks like. I want to do some chasing of light because it is 8 p.m. We're ready for the sunset. I truly think that Porto has one of the most beautiful sunsets just because of the way that the city is situated. You've got two sides of the city split between this canal and this valley and the sun seems to sort of set and melt right into the river. The lookout points get pretty busy, but since there is so much coastline of this river to sit and watch the sunset on, you're most definitely able to get a seat. So we found sunset and it is epic! Bon dia! It is a Friday here in Porto and Dave and I are about to start day two of our Porto adventure. We are up bright and early today because we wanted to visit a couple of the places before it got too busy. This is my outfit for today. I got this dress from H&M recently. It's just this really beautiful flowy pleated ornate flowy white dress. Stacking up my jewelry today on my wrist and my hands. I actually got these rings in Lisbon and I might have made a little purchase at Irma in Lisbon. But this is my outfit for exploring Porto day two. So we made it here to Palacio de Bolsa for basically opening. We have seven minutes until the doors open. I'm so excited because the square here is apparently really beautiful and can't wait to be one of the first ones in today. So something to note about Palacio de Bolsa is that you do have to enter with a guided tour. You cannot walk around on your own, but they are super understanding of you stopping to take pictures. And it was actually really nice to have a guide kind of explain all of the intricacies and stories of this very interesting business-based 
old institution where apparently even the man who designed the Eiffel Tower stayed for a bit. So we spent the day kind of just wandering around aimlessly and we stumbled upon this place that makes these like fancy prestige the bucket yeah like these codfish cake things and it is so pretty inside. It was definitely more of a novelty. It didn't taste that different from a regular pastage de bacalhau, but we did end up seeing a very interesting vegan protest on our way home from there. So we are having dinner now on the other side of Port Du called Gaia. And this is the side where they have a lot of really great port wine and we're having some seafood dinner and I'm gonna try Port Du for the very first time here in Port Du. Good morning! So we are leaving Porto now after a very short-lived but beautiful stay. The city is so nice and definitely has a very different feel than Lisbon does. And now we are on our way back to Lisbon to celebrate Dave's birthday. We have also a few stops that we want to check out on the way back to Lisbon that you can kind of only get if you rent a car. So excited to do more Portugal exploring today. Exploring. Explore, explore. Explore. And this beautiful man is also turning 35 tomorrow. Oh, so. 35 years young. So on our way back to Lisbon, we really wanted to stop by this place called Batalha Monastery. And this place actually has a lot of familial importance to Dave and his family. His mom actually came here when she was a little girl and took a picture in front of this gigantic horse statue. And we vowed to recreate the same photo with Dave. The monastery also houses the tombs of some really important people in Portuguese history. The place is absolutely huge. They do charge a small fee to enter, but it is honestly very, very small. And it's pretty cool. Every hour, I believe, they also do switching of the guards. And other than that, it is a beautiful place to walk around and visit. They also have a little garden that's really pretty in the back with this little wishing well that Dave gave me a couple euros to make a wish on. And I obviously won't tell you the wish, but I think it was a good one. Happy Sunday. We are here back in Lisbon. Uh, we checked into our new Airbnb, which is like a little, little questionable. It was really hard to sleep yesterday because of the June festival that happens literally right outside of our Airbnb. But anyhow, we are going to make the best of it because today is Dave's birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. So today we are going to be doing basically whatever Dave wants to do. And I think we're just going to walk around, maybe do some shopping. This is my outfit for today. I actually picked this up yesterday from, wait for it, a mango outlet. And I have my hair up today, just not doing anything too crazy. No accessories or anything, just my bracelets and my rings that I got here. And we're off for a birthday day adventure. Happy, happy birthday. So we took it pretty easy for Dave's birthday. We ended up going out a bit out of Lisbon to a shopping mall. He wanted to do some shopping. So we did that, wandered around that area, which was pretty residential, so there wasn't much to see. And then we actually got to see a book festival. We had no idea what was going on. Good evening, changed up a bit, and we're just headed out for the evening. I'm dressed kind of bar-like, um, but either way, I'm gonna go out and celebrate Dave's birthday, just wearing this red suit that I got um, recently from Zara and am absolutely obsessed with. It's like the best go-to when you don't know what to wear and you don't know if you wanna dress up or not. For accessories, wearing these white tassel earrings that you've seen me wear this week that I love. I actually just picked up these gold hair clips from Primark and love them and this is my half going out half don't know what we're doing outfit 
in the evening we found ourselves at LX Factory which is this incredible area kind of near the water close to Belay that is full of street art something that Dave is super passionate about and loves and we ended up going to a rooftop bar there and had a great time just relaxing and enjoying ourselves and celebrating Dave's 35th year of life. <laughs> Happy Monday! It is our official last day here in Portugal. Man, has it been a whirlwind and thank you guys so much if you made it to this part of the video for coming along the ride. We are going to spend our last day today, I believe in the Belém area. This is what I'm wearing for my very last day here in Portugal. It's this blue, like azulejo, like full skirt that I also got from the Mango Outlet that I was telling you guys about yesterday. This wrap top that you guys saw me wore already, this is from Topshop and just a, a Topshop bandeau underneath that you guys know I'm also obsessed with. And that is my outfit for our very last day in Portugal. So for our very last day in Lisbon, we ended up checking out MAT, which is a modern art museum, we believe, that is, again, close to the water, really close to Belém. But we actually went there just to kind of check out the view, and the structure of the building is really grand and really cool. It also has an incredible view of the city, so you can kind of see the hills and all the beautiful little houses on them. And then since we had such a great time at LX Factory the night before, Dave and I wanted to come back here during the day. We went to this famous bookstore that also has this sort of engineer inventor guy at the top of it who makes little widgets and machines that do things. It was such a cool way to end our day and our trip here in Lisbon. And suddenly it was day to go and tears might have been shed. Is it about 7 a.m. here in Lisbon Airport? I am just about to board my flight. Dave actually is headed home and I'm on to another little adventure that I'll be separating into a separate vlog. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys so much for coming all the way to Portugal with me. It was so nice to bring you guys along and I know that it was a super long trip. So thank you for staying to the end if you are here watching at the end. I hope you guys liked coming along with me. If you did like this video, make sure to give it a big inspired thumbs up as always comment below let me know if you've ever been to Portugal or want to go to Portugal and if you are new to the inspired family thank you so much for giving this video a watch and doing this two weeks of Portugal journey adventure with me we hope you'll join us for a little bit longer and subscribe but with that I hope you have an inspiring rest of your day remember that kindness doesn't cost a thing and I'll talk to you guys next time bye